What's up, guys? Tao here. You might have heard iPad OS 14 had been officially announced over a week ago. Now, the good news is this aging iPad Air 2 is officially supported. Now, literally, this is the last iPad on the Apple official list. So, for that, thank you very much for supporting this aging iPad Air 2. Although iPad OS 14 is officially supported, not just how well it runs and Will they get all the new features compared to other new devices? So let's find out. There are three main areas we will be focusing in this video. One is the new features, second is the overall performance and usability, the third is the battery life. But bear in mind, as the beta version continues, there will be some major changes along the way. So new features. There are few new features for the iPad OS 14 on the Air 2, in my opinion, are very welcome. Now, the first, uh, in my opinion, the obvious one is the widgets. So, normally you will have a today's view on the left. You can actually add on to or remove different uh, controls or different stats. Now, in addition to that, on the top of it, you will see a, a widget. So, this one, you can add on to it and you can remove it. So if you press the home screen anywhere and you will see a option on the top left corner, there's a plus. Now, one thing to know that if I am on a, another screen, so there isn't any option for you to add widgets to the home screen. For example, there, I'm on the second page right now, but there isn't any option for me to add. So you're going to have to go to the first page and then add different widgets. Now, right now, this is the app support. Um, according to Apple, there will be more apps support widgets in the future system updates. So as you can see here, I have a battery status. So right now I have six different Bluetooth devices connect to it and all showing me a different battery uh, remains. So I think this is very, very cool, especially if you have more uh, multiple Bluetooth devices connect to it. Uh, this is really good to see uh, how much battery you got left. Now, to add to it, so, uh, I press the home uh, screen and you can add different widgets. For example, if you want to have a calendar, for example, when you tap on that, it will show you different options and different style, different format, how you want to uh, display. Uh, so, for example, I do this. Okay, here we go. So now, you can move around or you can move here. So if you move this on the top, it will stay on the top. It will show this. Um, one thing I did notice that um, you can actually add, there's two options there. You can actually add something called smart widgets. So which means um, you can stack two different widgets or multiple widgets onto each other and then you can rotate. So for example, news, if I choose the same style and here's the top story news, I can either put them like this and we'll display two different widgets. Okay. Um, or I can put them on top of each other and they become one widgets but different stacks. So I can flip between different uh, widgets. Now, what I did notice that once you actually stack them together, there's no way for you to separate them. And also on the iPad OS 14, um, the widgets actually stay on the left hand side of the screen. You can't really move the widgets around to different location of the screen. It just won't let you do it. So that's unlike the iOS 14 on the iPhone, uh, where actually allow you to change the location on the screen so you can move around like this. So I really hope Apple will actually allow you to do that in the later update. To me, it's it makes sense for me to move around rather than just stay there. So you can have different widgets on different screens. Um, on the iPhone you can, but on the iPad OS at the moment, um, there isn't any option for you to do that. Another new feature available on the iPad OS and actually iOS is ability to change the format and change the recording quality 
on the camera and also there is a indication as soon as cameras is in use now if you notice i just tap on the camera app here is a green dot um, just lift it a little bit you can see the camera is on so there is a green dot which means the camera is in use so whenever there is a, a app or camera app it has been used the dot will show that means actually alert the user and also related to that so the first time in the camera you can actually change the record quality right now i'm on video and show you at the moment i'm on my video setting is right there so you can see there's a hd 30 that means recording on, on full hd 30 frame per second if i tap on that uh, you can see right now it changed to 720p and 30 frame per second this is the first time ever apple allow you to do this um, before you have to go into setting camera app and change the recording quality and the format that is a pain in the neck so that same thing apply to the ios as well so if i open the camera app you can see here right now on video the indication light is on and here is hd 60 frame per second if i tap on there uh, it says 4k 60 and hd 60 and 4k 60 so this is a very very welcome new feature for both ipad os and ios now another welcome new feature for a lot of users is the ability to see your tracking history so for privacy concern so now you can actually in safari you can actually tap on the uh, in the search bar in the url bar you can touch the the font icon there and now it will tell you the tracking report so now you can actually see what is going on at the background and who have been tracking you and what is the website tracking trying to track you so and also tell you what has been blocked by the safari now this is one of the new safari features will you know emphasize on the privacy uh, to me this is a quite a useful quite eye-opening to see at uh, just how many uh, trackers on different website trying to get your information get your browsing history and trying to give you a personalized ad at the moment uh, seems like the tracking report only works in safari so for example in a chrome browser there isn't any option for me to see it so even though i tap on setting there isn't any setting for me to uh, to see it there is site information but that is about it so for the moment uh, only safari has this issue uh, has this feature tracking report is right there let you see what is going on in the background now in terms of new features, uh, there are two uh, new features not uh, available on this iPad near Air 2. Uh, one is the ability to use Apple Pencil, so therefore the feature Scribble is out of the window. So there's no way this will support Scribble because Scribble uh, requires Apple Pencil. Now the second is the app library. So it, it is available on iOS. I personally think it's quite a good idea, especially for those who has a lot of apps on the phone so the on the very last screen there's always a app library you can see here these all the apps which is you can see and i'm not going to comment on the way the apple organized apps i think it can be uh, laid out better but this apple way of doing things so for those people who has a lot of apps on their phone this is a really welcome new feature now in terms of the overall performance uh, due to his still very early beta stage so i personally don't expect it runs very very smoothly um, in fact to my surprise i have so many apps open at the same time and even though you have quite a lot of apps open at the same time it still copes pretty well uh, you can see right now I have quite a lot of Windows apps open at the same time. It runs on OK. And if I do a split screen and I render pretty quickly. Now, the only time one actually struggle is if you have a large games and also other big application run at the background at the same time. And that's where this thing struggles. And which is understandably. Uh, given this iPad Air 2 is over five and a half years old now, so runs on the latest system, I do feel like it's kind of luxury right now 
um, Apple supporting this old hardware. Now, then again, let's hope in the future iOS, iOS iPad OS 15 will still support this Air 2, and hopefully Apple's gonna optimize the system for old hardware. So that's gonna be a miracle if iPad OS 15 support this iPad Air 2. Just for testing purpose, I used the Geekbench 4 um, to test the CPU, um, compute unit, and the battery life. Now, the CPU performance uh, throughout the iPadOS actually kind of stable, um, but this first beta version or this early beta stage, the, the CPU performance actually dropped quite dramatically. And on a single core, it's only 1,777, and multi-core is 4,408. Now compare, and uh, that's uh, iPadOS 14, and compare uh, to the previous one, so which is on the 13.6, which has not been released yet, and still on the testing stage. And single core actually overperform the current iPadOS 14. Um, they're actually both in the beta stage, but at the moment, the iPadOS 14 has the least single core performance at the moment. Now, in terms of compute unit performance, funny enough, I actually never finished the testing. So, in fact, the app actually crashed just before the finishing stage. So, so, so therefore, I don't really have a score for you guys, but this score is from the iOS 13.6, or which is the iPadOS 13.6. You can see the metal score is 7,784. And to me, it was quite good compared to uh, previous models, but you know, there is a slight drop uh, compared to this one, which is the 13.4. Um, the actual computer unit is a bit interesting and actually is crushed. Now, there might be because the iPadOS 14 is so new, so the Geekbench has not been optimized for it. So hopefully later down the road, it will update itself and will be back to normal. Now, in terms of the battery life, I feel like this topic is never ending for these five and a half years old iPad Air 2. Now, due to the age of the battery, it is understandably throughout each new OS update or new OS upgrade, the battery life is reduced. Now, because the system needs essentially it needs better hardware to run them smoothly. Now, if it runs on old hardware, for example, this one, it's gonna struggle. It will need high efficiency and more battery life, more power to run them. So therefore, the battery life drain is gonna be much, much quicker. Now, in terms of my usage, for the past 24 hours, you can see around about five hours. And this is without gaming. I did not play any game at all. Now, if you play games, the battery is gonna drain extremely quick. So, especially now, because it's on beta, the efficiency is not as good as the official release. So, in my opinion, there's only so much Apple can do in terms of the efficiency, solely because this is really, really old hardware. Just for testing purpose, I used the Geekbench 4 on the tablet to test the battery life. The result actually is quite interesting. Actually, it scored higher than Previous iOS iPad OS is um, actually scored 3,730 and on the 14 version and score a lot less on the 13.6, which is not um, in the official release yet, and score higher than the 13.5. Now I suspect this is more likely a artificial score; it's not a real score. So when the actual beta develops, so the system will take advantage of CPU and the compute unit, so therefore it is during the battery a bit quicker. But for now, the battery actually tested is last a bit longer, but that's gonna be very, very artificial. All right, that's been it. Hopefully this video is useful for you guys who are out there who owns the iPad Air 2. And if you own an iPad Air 2, please consider subscribe. I'll be doing this kind of video uh, throughout the beta stage and uh, throughout the entire iPad OS 14. Now, if you have thoughts on the, the new system, uh, the good, the bad, and what is your favorite features, and what is your least favorite features, please leave the comment and we can all share. And any opinion, just leave a comment. So please consider subscribe and like.
see you guys in the next video.